it's Wednesday, May 25th, 2022, and I'm reporting for the World News, your trusted source for news. Today's story is the updates of the Russia-Ukraine war. A lot has been going on recently with the Russia-Ukraine conflict, or as Zelensky has put it, Russia waging a total war. So there are some updates to the war. During a time of uncertainty and tragedy, Ukraine has surprised everyone with how they have held Russia back. There already have been some tension between Russia and Ukraine after the Soviet Union collapsed, and then Ukraine became an independent country. Putin, the Russian president, wants to remake the USSR and make Ukraine part of it as well. He thinks that the people of Ukraine are the same as Russians just because they were a united country a couple of decades ago. Things started to become hostile when Russia annexed Crimea, the former peninsula of Ukraine. Then the Russia-Ukraine war on February 24th, 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine. Russian tanks rolled into Ukraine from multiple directions, from Belarus in the north, separatist controlled parts of Ukraine in the east and occupied Crimea in the south, aiming to decapitate the government by taking the capital Kiev and capturing as much territory as quickly as possible. Planning and logistics seem to be a problem for Russia. We were all surprised in the early days, like in the first month or so, at how well the Ukrainians have been fighting back. No less so. In the last two and a half months or so, I've demonstrated why that is. Ukraine is fully mobilized and is backed by the world's most capable military alliance. That is from the physical perspective. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has even surprised many, many military analysts who had expected fighting to be over very quickly. The three-month-old war has exposed unexpected weaknesses in Russia's forces. Russia is all over the place, and from the start, it didn't have a main effort and had to scale that down. It retains old command structures and old ways of doing military business. Particularly, over the last eight years, Ukrainians have learned a great deal about how to exercise command and control. They devolve command and control to the lower levels and the moral component as well. Ukraine is defending their home against a vicious and brutal enemy, whereas the Russian soldiers don't seem to have much of an idea what they're doing. Russian leaders have no strategic focus. Ukraine is a superior fighting force. As well as some more news on the war, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has called for maximum sanctions against Russia and said Vladimir Putin is the only Russian official he would meet to negotiate and end the war with. He spoke via video link to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. On May 24th, Vadim Shishimirin, a Russian soldier, was convicted for war and got a life sentence. This was the first trial Ukraine had for the war crimes committed by Russian soldiers. More trials are expected. For Ukrainians, it's an opportunity to follow up on their commitment and show that they're going after these crimes and pursuing them accordingly. The city of Maripol is almost completely destroyed by Russia and under complete Russian control after two months of fighting and the formal declaration from Ukraine to surrender in Maripol late Monday. In the city of Maripol, 100,000 citizens of Ukraine have been completely blockaded by the Russian military and have had to live without essentials like food, water, and medicine. Hundreds of these fighters have since been evacuated from Maripol, steelwork, and all of the citizens have been evacuated. During the three months of the Russia-Ukraine war, 22,000 residents of the city were killed. Gaining control of Maripol was an essential part of Russia's plan. According to BBC News, this is because they needed a corridor between Crimea and Donbass, both of which Russia has invaded. Svetlodarsk in the eastern Donbass region is a Ukrainian town that has been taken over by Russian forces. This town uh, is still home to 10,000 Ukrainian civilians. Russia invaded th these places mostly because the language commonly spoken there was Russian. Since Russia has been making poor and violent decisions like these invasions, many chains such as McDonald's, Starbucks, ExxonMobil, and Netflix have gotten out of the Russian market. It is not only these brands, but many big name companies have been stopping business with Russia. The companies that have paused production in Russia are Disney, H&M, Warner Bros, Apple, and Caterpillar. Stores that have temporarily closed down due to the conflict are Nike, Bloomberg, Adidas, Uniqlo, Ikea, Nestle, Unilever, and many more. Starbucks has even donated earnings from having business in Russia to humanitarian relief efforts in Ukraine. Due to the Russia-Ukraine war, there has been less grain exports and food insecurity in Latin America and the Caribbean. People that are being affected by this decrease in grain exports and the war are mainly people that are already going through food insecurity, which is also heightened by COVID-19. Ukraine is unable to export these goods because Russia has closed down the ports they need to export food and is basically stealing the food of starving children. The EU has been accused of Putin of weaponizing food supplies. Almost 400 million people depend on Ukraine to provide food and because of the war, Ukraine isn't able to, which has been causing famines. And now I have my food, Ukraine's in Haiti, from Ukraine, Ukraine's capital, Kiev.
countless people in Ukraine are dealing with their own personal trauma. How are people coping with this war generally? Well, that's right. The people living here in Kyiv uh, have experienced extreme cases of trauma, and some of them are, have witnessed and experienced pillaging, violence, murder, torture, and they're going through a lot. Collectively, after talking to some of these people, it seems that it, it's important for them to keep busy and to work and focus on their their families and to put their lives back together and reconstruct their lives and even their homes in many cases. I'm really amazed by the resilience um, some people have been displaying in these situations. It's also very important that you don't just pack away your emotions, but try to seek psychological help and deal with this on a professional level. Thank you for listening. This has been Ariane Pomnichev for The World News.